Hello, welcome to Daily Prayer today for uh, April 19th, 2020. Glad that you are with me today. Let's go ahead and get started. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Reconciling God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism, you have broken down dividing walls and made us members of your house. By the power of your Holy Spirit, build us up to be your holy temple, a place of peace and welcome for all through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our readings for today are Psalm 93 and 150, Exodus 14, 5 through 22, 1 John 1, 1 through 7, and John 14, 1 through 7. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Psalm 93. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. More majestic than the thunders of mighty waters. More majestic than the waves of the sea. Majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are, are very sure. Holiness benefits your house, O Lord, forevermore. And Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with, with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Exodus 14, 5 through 22. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the minds of Pharaoh and his officials were changed towards the people, and they said, What have we done, letting Israel leave our service? So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 picked chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the Israelites, who were going out boldly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, his chariot drivers and his army. They overtook them, camped by the sea, by Piharath, in front of Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you will only have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. Then the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind him, them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel, 
And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went to the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on the right and on their left. Second reading is from 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard and what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Our Gospel reading is John 14, 1 through 17, or 1 through 7, excuse me. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way of the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him, and have seen him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Nope. Push this button. So, today we have a continuation of this story of the Israelites, the Hebrews, on their way out of Egypt. We heard this in in the beginning of our wilderness uh, Sunday school. I encourage you to check that out if you have not already. Um, But the Israelites are on their way out, and Pharaoh decides to come out against them. And we have to think about what this really means. Pharaoh takes his 600 chariots and all of the rest of his chariots, and they sort of descend upon the Hebrews. Imagine the terror that this would have raised. This would be as if you were a bunch of refugees, and all of a sudden a, you know, a whole platoon of tanks. I don't know if tanks are in platoons, but, you know, a whole bunch of tanks are coming up against you. This would be the most advanced uh, warfare technology, a chariot, for the day. Um, And adding to that, Egypt's or the Pharaoh's special chariots were covered in this shiny metal called uh, lustrium. And it was, so it it would shine, it would be loud, it would be frightening, right? And the people freak out. Why did you lead us out into the wilderness? Were there not enough graves in Egypt that we could have just died there? What are you doing here? Questioning leadership, questioning what's going on. Um, they do not see a answer for this. There's a huge army coming towards them. There's a sea behind them. They see no answer. This is so very much like what we face in the church even today. We, there are so many questions within the church, just COVID aside, right? But just 
structural changes within the church, cultural changes within the church and outside of the church. Um, the, we are in this period of post-Christendom. We are no longer in the period of Christendom where sort of the, um, the culture and, and everything sort of led towards the church. We're not in that place anymore. And some of us look at this and say, I don't see an answer. There is not a, um, a, a technical answer to the questions that we have. How do we get millennials back into the church or into the church in the first place? You know, how do we stop the, the just decline of our churches and our denominations? How do, we, how do we have a solution for this? We see the impending sort of doom and COVID-19 and, and quarantine and all that sort of stuff has just really heightened this, where we see the way that we've been doing things doesn't really work right now, right? Gathering together in a building is not something that we can do. So how are we continuing to be the church? How do we do that? Um, I think we have sought some answers for that, and and I pray that God will continue to to bless us and nurture us in the ways that we do that. But you know what? The answers that we are looking for are not te uh, technical ones. They are not ones that look just like the answers that we have had for the last 20, 100 years, whatever it is, right? It's not about programs or staffing or that sort of thing. There are adaptive answers to these questions. The answer that God has for the Hebrew people is not the same one that they were expecting. They looked at all their available answers that they were used to having. It's either fight or flight, and neither of those are possible. They could fight, but they'll be completely creamed. They could flee, but they can't flee very far, right? Those are the only two options available to them in under sort of normal circumstances. And God says, I have an answer for you, and it's not the one that you were looking for or expecting. And he has Moses raise up the staff, and God divides this sea before them. Here is a path that you did not know was going to be there. It is a flea, but it's not even a flea in panic. It's a flea uh, through God's divine path. God has paths for us as the church. God has paths for us in the mid of, of a pandemic that maybe we were not expecting. Our call at this time is to see the paths that God has set before us. To understand where God is calling to us to in this time and place and recognizing that it may not and probably won't look the way that it used to. But God is still with us, and God is still leading us forward. We have in 1 John that, that Jesus brings light, and in him there is no darkness. If someone says, says that they're in the light, if they say that they follow Jesus and they have darkness in them, there is a problem there. They're, they're actually lying. And so our call is not to, you know, focus on others, but to focus on ourselves. Where is, is there darkness in me? Is there, a thing, is there something that I need to root out? Is there something that I need to repent of, to change my mind about, to change my actions about? Is God's light truly in me? Am I allowing God's light to be in me? I am reminded again, this is I think the second time this week of, of um, Desmond Tutu and his beautiful sort of um, statement that light is greater than darkness, that love is stronger than hate, um, that God is more powerful than even all of the powers that we see around us. Again, back to the, to the Hebrews, they're, they're on this, um, this precipice, they're at the sea and they see this strong army before them. And their first thought is not that God is more powerful than this army. They think we are toast, we're dead, right? In John's gospel, this is part of this wonderful um, section between uh, the Lord's Supper 
and when Jesus is arrested, where Jesus is really preparing, praying for, getting his disciples ready for what is to come, not only in the next several hours, but in the next years ahead. And they don't quite get it as usual. He asks them to abide in him to not let their hearts be troubled, but to trust in God and trust in him. That the way forward may be different. It's not what they were expecting. But God is at work in it. Thomas says, well, we, we don't even know the way. What are you talking about? Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. The way that is being presented here by Jesus, the way forward for humanity, is not like anything that they were expecting. They had been waiting for a Messiah. They had been waiting for this this coming king. And he came and he died. He was a sacrifice on their behalf and ours. It's not what they were expecting. It was not what they were hoping for. They had no idea that this was coming. But maybe they should have. And Jesus presents this new way forward. A path through dark waters. Jesus provides a way forward when there is no other way. And our call is to follow that path. Even though it looks strange. This is our call as disciples at this particular time and this particular place. And it's a call for disciples always to follow Jesus Christ, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Amen. Let's go ahead and look at our Counting the Omar um, section for today. I'm sorry, I did not go to the next one. And I did not flip over to that. There we go. We're finishing up Easter week with the expansiveness and generosity. And on Sunday, we focus on outer reality or sovereignty of God. Looking around me, do I have just what I think I need or more or less? Can I do something about this? Do I see a situation where I can do something special? that will change someone's life? Can I take on specific exercises to improve my relationship with generosity? Am I able to surrender to really making a change in myself? Now let us continue with our prayers. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Great and wonderful God, we praise and thank you for the gift of renewal in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for ministries of music and the arts. Those who enlighten and entertain. the love of family and friends. Time for rest and recreation. Promises kept and hope for tomorrow. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? You make all things new, O God, and we offer our prayers for the renewal of the world and the healing of its wounds. Especially we pray for the church in North America.
rest and renewal for creation. Those who are enslaved by addictions. All who long to live in your holy realm. People of God, for what else do we pray? Blessed are you, O God, our Creator. At the work of your hands we sing for joy. Keep us in your grace and peace this day, and teach us to glorify and enjoy you forever. Through Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now let's continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. To God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Join us, of course, for worship today, later today. And um, we'll be very happy to uh, let you join us for that on YouTube and uh, for fellowship afterwards as well. Also, we'll have Sunday school and continue our look at the wilderness. Like this video, share it with someone else, subscribe, and click the notification button as well. Our readings today came from the Reformed Common Lectionary, daily lectionary readings, and were new Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Our liturgy came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA, 2018 edition. Our um, devotion came from Counting the Omar by uh, Teresa Horton. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye.